five, four, three. Does anybody, are you ready, um, James? Does anybody, is anybody here going to the concert at six? Okay, are you going to be worried if you're a little late? No. All right, because, um, all right, now let me introduce myself. My name is Myra Marr. We have folks who have helped organize this, Linda Casanova, Frank Casanova, their granddaughter Maya, and Amy Green, who could not be with us today. James Cooper is going to be videoing us. And so uh, the reason I asked if anyone was going to the concert is because I do want to, we all want to hear your stories. It will take longer hearing your stories. So just be aware of that. And I will be conducting you on a specific path and I'm going to go through more of that. But just so you'll know, we're going to try very hard to stay on the paths. There are paths, even when you can't see them. Um, I've pretty well figured it out. Linda and I can, you know, at a certain angles, you can determine where they are. All right, so are we ready? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I want to talk a little bit about cemetery etiquette. And the first thing I want to remind us of is that we are not the first peoples to inhabit this land. And we probably won't be the last. Came here before. <laughs> Doug, I can count on you every time. So, Christian church cemeteries are considered holy. We call the land hallowed land. So we're going to ask you to be respectful of this holy ground and that and to be cognizant of the fact that these are family members of people who live here today. And you are gonna recognize some names of these folks. They're gonna be people, the descendants are gonna be people you know. They all contributed to the development of this valley. And so we want to be thankful for that. Anyone want to throw out some names of people you know in the valley? Yeah, who hope? No, just people they know. Sandoval. Sandoval's a big name, okay. Trujillo does not show up in our cemetery. Isn't that interesting? The carts do. Yeah, maybe. Perea, yes. All right, okay, that's wonderful. All right, so I'm going to ask you very carefully to follow my directions, also because the ground is uneven, even the flagstones are uneven, and there are cacti. We did our best to get rid of them, but we did not get rid of all of them. So please do be careful. Well, I'm not walking in there, okay? Okay, <laughs> then you stay right there. Okay, all right. And remember, if you see a stone, it needs to stay there. If you see a coin or anything that looks even out of place, it needs to stay there. It may be, have been put there as a sign of respect. Do, we do have children, so we're going to ask that the children stay close to their parents and not wander in, through the cemetery. And again, let me remind you of the cactus and the unevenness. So I'll give directions each time we need to make a change, all right? And my voice is loud enough, y'all are hearing me just fine, right? Good, all right. So this cemetery was actually established in 1890. Maya and Frank and I have attempted to dress in 1890s fashion. <laughs> Especially the flip-flops. Especially, the Especially Frank's flip-flops. And the green hair. <laughs> I married an old lady. She's wearing my boots. A 1980s blouse making an 1890s outfit. I thought that was kind of cool. So there are a total of 186 grave sites in this little tiny piece of land. Yeah, they're doing much room so That's only. right. 21 graves. 21 have no markers, but we know who's buried there. There are 52 unknown, but I had a conversation with Gilbert Sandoval this morning, and I don't think they're unknown. I think we just need to sit down with people like Gilbert before he doesn't remember anymore. The remaining grave sites, there are actually some unreserved or aren't even yet reserved. 
if you're interested. <laughs> What's the rules for getting in other than dying? I do not know. I do not know, but I imagine it's not very difficult because there's a friend of you James knew. knows. Um, I have access to that information. Okay, you can ask James later. And don't you know a Jewish man who we ran across his gravestone yesterday and a Jewish guy is buried here. All right. So we've got we're we're so we are a community tricky. church. <laughs> Definitely. All right, so let me very briefly describe to you what we're going to do. We're going to walk almost three quarters of the way down this flagstone path. And then we're going to make a left and we're going to string out on it's a it's a path. We're going to string out on that path and I'm going to tell you about a few folks. We're going to face one direction, then we're going to turn around and face another direction. Then we're going to go back out onto the flagstone path and up to another gravesite and across on a very hardly recognizable path, down another hardly recognizable path, back to that original one we turned in on, back down all the way down here and around and in to see the last gravesites which may have the most conversations <laughs> up and into back into the main part of the grave uh, cemetery. All right, so we're going to start with the great great grandfather of someone who not too many years ago died. So follow me and watch your step. This is where we're going to turn left. Are you going to go all the way down to the end? I'm going to stand here and I want you all to string out all the way over to that footstone or farther around the iris path, iris um, grove. And I will, I promise you, you will get to see things. We will make sure. That's probably far enough. I think this, we can squeeze up and you'll make it. But Doug, you do have to keep going. Yeah, sorry. You're going to get your exercise today. What else will have to be? You go find a tree. Yes. Do not do that. You're a man. You like trees around here. I wish my brother would retain his sense of humor. I guess he never had one, right? <laughs> My brother. <laughs> All right, so I want you to turn to looking to the east, please. And I want you to look at this very modest gravesite right in front of me. It's got one of the, I'm going to do this. It's got one of those real simple markers. You can't read a thing on it. But if you look at it, you'll see that in this quadrant of the cemetery, it's right about in the middle. It really is just about in the middle. This is Jose Francisco Archuleta. He had deep roots, has still deep roots and a big tree growing in this valley. His ancestors came from Toledo, Spain. They were conquistadors and they were given the Canyon de San Diego land grant oh. in 1798. His wife Vivianita Archuleta rests beside him. Both markers are missing. In 1880, 1881, probably 1880 or a little bit before, he donated the land that became the Hamas Springs Community Presbyterian Church. Oh. We know that Belle Shields, one of Reverend Shields' wives, was buried here in 1878. And the Catholic Church opened its cemetery just to the west 25 years later in 1906. Now the significance, the reason we're having the cemetery tour today is because 
The Hamas Springs Presbyterian Church opened on July 4th in 1881. This cemetery, again, didn't come along until 1890, but it opened on this, well, July 4th in 1881. The first post office here in 1888 was named the Archuleta Post Office. It was not until 1907 that it was renamed Hamas Springs, and even then, many people called it Hamas Hot Springs. Okay, now everybody turn to the west. All you have to do is turn around and face west, please. <laughs> no, right there, I'm going to do this. Forgive me. Forgive me, folks down here. We can't see the gravesite, yeah. but in here is the Perea family. Angelita and one other Perea family member. In 1798, 19 Perea family members came to the Canyon de San Diego land grant. In 1861, um, they became the actual, they were the original grantees, excuse me. In 1861, they were named the original grantees. And they are obviously heirs to the land grant. In 1878, the ATS and F Railroad planned to build a logging train from Bernalillo along the Jemez River north and then go west. And Don Jose Leandro Perea put an exorbitant price on the land. Mm -hmm. Was he trying to make a lot of money or was he trying to discourage them? It's interesting, Maybe we don't both. know. So of course we do know that the railroad did not come this way. Yay. It went through the Kilman Tunnels. And in 1894, guess what the name of the post office was? The Perea Post Office, exactly. All right, so let me look at my map and make sure I do this correctly. All right, we're doing really well. We can stay right where we are. We are looking right here at Reverend Shields' headstone. Reverend Doctor, he was also a medical doctor, John Milton Shields was born in Pennsylvania in 1841. He served as a hospital steward in the Civil War. After the war, he went to medical school. He got married and within months, his wife died in Troy, New York. Then he married Emily. Emily is buried right over there there you are thank you so interesting they kind of uh, bookended their family yep. Emily um, he came up here as a medical missionary at, established at the mission at the Pueblo he stayed down there for a couple of years on their way back to Hamas Springs from a trip uh, they were coming down the rut from Raton the stagecoach tipped over because it's so rocky and Emily suffered a brain traumatic injury a traumatic brain injury and she lived for a short while but then succumbed mm -hmm. so the Presbyterian Church what do they do they send two more women missionary teachers Laura Shields and Isabella Leach in 1881 Isabella Bell Leach Shields becomes Mr. Shields, Dr. Reverend Shields' next wife. They had five children. Two of them did not live. Guy and Clara are buried right there. And in 1900, Belle, after 21 years, she died. Reverend Shields was only 59 at the time, but he did not marry again. He died at the age of 74. <clears throat> All right, so now I want to ask you to follow me and come back to the flagstone path. And we're going to go and not do what you're doing, Glenn. Okay. <laughs> Hi there. Hi, I've been waiting at the church. Oh, sorry. I didn't know where I was oh, supposed sorry. to meet. Oh, sorry, we didn't make it clear to you. But that's okay, you have not missed everything. We, so started, what have I missed? we started with the great great grandfather of someone who just recently, within the last four years, died in this valley, within the last four years and one month. And I'll tell you who that was if you don't, can't guess it later. 
And then Reverend Shields' family, Reverend Shields is the one who really founded the Presbyterian Church. Yeah. Is it, was it uh, Mr. Adams? No. They're related though. Oh. Yep, yep, yep. You, you're getting there. Okay. So here we are coming down. Everybody come on down the flagstone path. And here are Helen and John Adams. As the lady who just joined us said, Adams is a well-known family in our valley. Amy Green, whom I mentioned, helped organize the tour. She is an Adams. She is the grandchild of these folks. So Helen, the Helen here, was the daughter of Reverend Shields. She was an advocate for this cemetery. She was also a postmistress in the early 1900s. Women sure did a lot of neat things back then, didn't they? Yeah. 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 That's right. I was going to say. It was there at the, that she met John, John Adams. John came from Massachusetts to survey the Hamas Forest, which was larger than this forest district is now. Even it, it's now part of the Santa Fe National Forest, but apparently part of the Santa Fe was part of Hamas at, in that time. They had three sons, John Jr., Fred, and Paul. Paul is Amy's father, who recently died. Nine grandchildren. John Jr. Be, went into the Forest Service. So family members still come here, as you know, Amy and other children, and they, they love to talk about their family history. So I wish they were here to tell us more. But family things got in the way. All right, so we've done Archuleta, she Perea, Shields, and Adams, and now we're gonna make a, a walk across a more open area. If you wanna stand here, I think my voice will project anyone who doesn't wanna walk across. And then we also will come back around, so if you wanna stay on that path, it actually would not be bad at all. If you wanna get back on that path, and a few of us can go this way. We have a nice crowd here. All right, so we're going over to Ben Sandoval. Ben Sandoval to tell you the story of the Sandovals. Some of it. I can't begin to tell all of it. And I had a conversation with Gilbert this morning if I didn't tell you. And he uh, he started naming off <laughs> names that I don't see on any of our lists. So he knows who some of these unmarked graves <laughs> are. So the Sandoval's family's presence is very also very long. It goes back very far. Other Hispanic families, in addition to the Sandovals, you all named some of them, that are in the cemetery are the Montoya, we mentioned the Perez, we walked by the Vigils, Gonzalez Garcia, Barros, Barros is a Sandoval. Somebody, some grandfather, Gilbert told me. And of course, the Archuletas. So it's likely that when you see an, a space where you don't see marked graves and there is then they're probably family members of people we do know. So Juan Cristomo Sandoval was the grandfather of Ben Sandoval Sr. He married Juliana Archuleta, who was Jose Francisco's daughter. That's the man, remember, who donated the land for the Catholic uh, Presbyterian Church. Oops. <laughs> Juliana's brother was Ematerio Archuleta, and he was one of the first trustees of the church. The Sandoval family has a history of being mayordomos in our village. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure you've all figured out what, who that is now. That's the person who controls our water rights. <laughs> we all have, or many of us have a sequia 
and water rights, which is an old Spanish way of watering the land because a lot of Spain is arid. It was actually developed by the Moors, by the way, not by the Spaniards. I have discovered that from some of my research. If anybody knows differently, go ahead and speak up, but that's what I understand. And so that's a very long history that's what we're part of with this water. Water is, water is critical. Water is everything. And we're very thankful to the Sandoval family and the other families who have stepped into these roles of being Mayor Domos. It's usually held in high respect and honor in the community, but I think it's a very difficult job. So we need to try to be very thankful for the people doing it. All right, now, let's see how I'm gonna get you back there. We have a nice lot of people here. We're doing pretty well. Where's our path? Okay, so if we can go straight back out and come back in here or we can mosey around. We'll mosey. Just go ahead and mosey. You come in hope. So there's usually a headstone and a footstone, but it's not always clear which direction we're going. Okay, all right, so I actually need to be talking about that grave right there. <laughs> Another very modest, unmarked grave. This is the child of Reverend M. and Jesse Fenton, which makes me think of all the things that women did before we had modern medicine when pregnancy and childbirth and death were all very closely connected. Many children are buried on these grounds who didn't get a chance to have children of their own. The story is that Reverend Fenton and his life, wife did not want to bury their child all by herself up on the, their ranch, on their homestead, so they put her near their good friend, Belle Shields. Reverend Fenton himself was a missionary at the Jemez Pueblo, along with his wife, who was a teacher. He was also a surveyor. He surveyed most of Sandoval County. Can you believe that? That's a big county. Yes, it is. It's 11,000 acres. 11, I know that because I used to be on the Jemez Valley Education Foundation. It's a huge county, huge county. Very dispersed, as you know. They homesteaded up at Fenton Lake on the Saboya Creek, and the lake was just a stock pond at that time. Most of that ranch, 640 acres, were eventually sold off. In 1974, some of it was donated to become the Environmental Education Center near Seven Springs. It's run by Manzano Day Center, Day School. So we started out talking about babies who are buried here. There are probably many we don't know about, but I want to mention a few we know are in this cemetery right now. One is the child of Reverend and Jesse Fenton. Which is one of these? This, that one. We think it's that one right there. Um, Clara Shields we've seen, and Guy Shields we've seen. A child of Mrs. Garcia, which should be very nearby. Don't know exactly where. <coughs> The child of Richard and Lucy. It's Richard and Lucy Leach. Um, so it's not Bell. Okay. So there's a child of Richard and Lucy Leach. 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 There's a cart infant. There's a Ramsey infant. You know the Ramsey name? Yeah. As, are they related, the Ponderosa Ramseys? I don't know. Okay. And then we don't know where Dennis Maestas is buried, but Dennis is up here too. All right, so now we are at the Miller's. Why don't y'all come around where you can see the Miller's graves here, grave sites. And I'll stand, come on around here and I'll stand in the middle here. 
running away. <laughs> running away. You're not running very fast. <laughs> oh, I didn't realize. I uh, thank you. We need anecdote. Have you all noticed a plaque in the plaza? Uh, oh yes. There is a plaque on a stone um, obelisk as you enter. That is Dennis Maester. Eight years old. Sorry, I'm sorry. And he. Forty-three. He died. He died. And what was the cause of his death? Car accident. I am. That's what I thought. Right here on Highway Four. It was only paved when. Nineteen fifty. Yeah, uh, that was asphalt. I mean, the first. I mean, it was really only paved. More recently, right? Yeah. When. Seventies. Fifties. Fifties. Yeah. Fifties. Okay. Okay. All right. Very interesting. <laughs> All right, so we have here John Miller and Mary Streit Miller. He was quite the entrepreneur and she was a woman who just never stopped. Mr. Miller owned the Santa Fe Stage Station, the Hamas Trading Post. Do you know what became, what is now, what exists now that was the Hamas Trading Post? It was the stage stop. I'm pretty sure it was the stage stop. A ho the mercantile, where was the mercantile? Los Ojos, originally. That was Los Ojos. And a restaurant. So they, 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 some of them have changed places. The mercantile then came over to where the stage stop is now. But yes, there, we've had quite a thriving community at one time. There were two gas stations and a car repair shop at one time. So in 1881, John Miller served as one of the first trustees and in 1884, he married Mary Lodisa Streit, also from Pennsylvania. Why are all these people coming from Pennsylvania? I have no idea. Dry air, maybe? You let them in. Yeah, yeah. You know what? You may have something there because there was a big problem with TB. Yes. So that may have been exactly what it was. Okay, so after leaving the Pueblo, Mary became a teacher at the Presbyterian Church. She was the organist. She was a church elder. She wrote a book. <laughs> when John passed in 1917, she continued to run his business. Says, sound familiar, Phyllis? Yes. Yes. <laughs> she passed in 44 at the age of 87, and the name of her book is A Quilt of Words. Now, their son Hugh, he never married. You see his headstone over here. The land that he owned was purchased by the Higgins and became Hummingbird Music Camp. Lots of good history that we actually participate in every day. Okay, so now we're going to take that long trek. Let's all go back to the Flagstone Path. Go meet me back in the parking lot. Linda is leading the way. Uh oh, okay. I don't even know. Am I on him? Oh, look at the top of the ants walk back. Oh, yeah, red ants are bad. Ants, guys. We disturbed ants. Keep moving, Miguel, you're going to get them. And somebody did something out of respect there. Elk or deer. <laughs> so see, this is a path, you can tell. And there is one over there, but it's, it's difficult to get people on, this many people, so. Yes. I could not think of his name. Linda and I could not think of his name. And what was the woman's name? The blonde bombshell. Jean Harlow. Okay, so we have another anecdote to tell. Glenn remembers another anecdote. Glenn had some conversations with um, 
Anne Watson. Ha Anne Haramil, what was his first name? Whose mother worked for Capone? <laughs> oh, yeah, uh, Mel Hadamio and I used to drive school buses, and when he uh, finally retired at 88, we spent an hour together down in uh, Canyon, and he said, my mother came back from Mr. Capone's lodge up in Seven Springs area, said, Mr. Capone, a very nice man. <laughs> <laughs> and then... Um, <laughs> I know a lady who works for the state, Ann Watson, and she said her grandma, uh, Sophie Montoya, was going into stage top, I don't know, 30s, 40s, um, and here come a couple of bodyguards right at her. They separate, and here comes Capone right at her. So two people have confirmed with me. And then the little house that um, Amy Green's husband bought where the paraclete priest used to be, Jean Harlow had that built, uh, and she died in 26. She was an actor, and gave it to Capone. When I came here in '81, she gave it to Capone. Yeah, that's what we've heard. Whoa. When I when Did I came really in '80, get anybody to say that for sure? But yeah. When I came in '81, might be a little hanky panky in there. Yeah. <laughs> Who knows? A little. <laughs> <laughs> when I came in '81, the windows were like four inches wide, and I looked down at that building and said, "What is that about?" The priest moved in there and the windows got much bigger, but it would seem to me, you know, Capone and whatever. <laughs> That's right. All right. Okay, so now let's see if I can get us over here. All right, follow me, please. We're going over. It's okay, baby. I'm just going right there. Going right here. It's right here, right here. It's very career up there right now. And the Presbyterian Church was a lot of Lutherans had a lot to do with getting started. So it's I mean uh, yeah, Lutherans. Right, Diane, what your family was some of your family was Lutheran? Episcopalian. 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 So it's it's really a community church. All right, so we have arrived at a beautiful, well-kept piece of cemetery land here for the Lewis family. In 1921, Leonard and Hazel Lewis moved their family. 1920? 28. 28. Whoops. Let me fix that. Got it. <laughs> Can always use another hand. Thank you. Next time I may get some help. 1928, Leonard and Hazel Lewis moved their family to the Hamas. Leonard served as a forest ranger for the Santa Fe National Forest. And this is where we know from that time that the district was much more extensive than it is now. His first home was a small cabin up in Seven Springs. He had nine children. The family traveled around Hamas and other locations and some still worked with the Forest Service. In 1938, Leonard died in a location that is very dangerous and people still have bad car wrecks, Dark Canyon. So please be aware of that. It really gets bad up there in the winter especially. Hazel and the kids moved back to Albuquerque, but after the kids grew up and World War II ended, oh, go ahead, jump in. <laughs> this is, I won't tell you who wrote this. No, I, didn't. I know who, I, okay. I saw it on Facebook. Um, uh, my grandfather's brother, Hilliard, came and got Grandma Hazel and all nine kids. The youngest was Junie, six months old. And the oldest was Ward, who was 20. Ward Lewis had a lumber mill up here for many years. Uh, my dad, Dave Lewis, um, is the one who built the intersection in La Cueva and sold real estate. My mom is in the middle there, Doris Lewis. Dale Lewis is my sister-in-law, my brother's first wife. Uh, she passed away from breast cancer. Uh, but anyway, to go back to Grandma and the kid, nine kids, I can't even imagine it. Um, Uncle Hill came and got her 
and the kids and took them to Roswell. Wonderful. Oh. And they lived in Roswell for two or three years. Oh. And then they moved to Albuquerque. Okay. And then they came, the family came back and they have opened gas stations, garages, real estate businesses, sawmills, hotels, restaurants, and a garbage removal business. Yes. And helped start the church and helped, you know, keep the church going and still to this day and helped start the American Legion Post 75. That's correct. So this is generation five for the Lewis family now. Is Hope five or is Hope six? Oh. Well, let's see. Grandpa. <laughs> Grandpa, was Daddy, Dave, me. Three, four. She's five. Yeah. So she's fifth, five. Fifth yeah. generation. Okay. And that means Amanda's uh, child is fifth generation also? Yes. Okay. Okay. All right. And I don't know yeah. if I mentioned. Okay. We'll get there. All right. Now, there is a path that goes around this tree, and we're going to go to the cart enclosure up there. I'm going to go first and show you the path. Over here, guys. I didn't hear. <laughs> Come on, guys, over here. There are a lot of family members we're not even addressing, right? We're mostly paying attention to the patriarchs of the church, probably. Hello! Come on, guys. Come on, let's come on over here and then you can wander. Philip. <laughs> That's that tone of voice. See, I told you you didn't do that very much, right? Yes, I think the <laughs> kids <laughs> just would jump right up when he said that. <laughs> All of this popped like four inches off the ground. And like, I didn't do anything. Right and over here, guys. Come on in where you can face me and see something over here. These are um, reserved. There's nobody in those. So it's fine. You can step on those graves. <laughs> All right. So we're now almost back to where we started. The man buried beneath the tube cross here is the great, great grandson of Jose Francisco Archuleta right over there. So who is that? That's Emmett. That's Emmett. So Emmett Cart's father came from West Virginia with a certain Mr. Porter. Was that Porter's Landing, Mr. Porter? Yes. Okay. Thank you. To work the coal mines and ended up blasting the Gilman Tunnels where the railroad really went. <laughs> And that was for the Santa Fe Northwestern at that point in the early 1900s. Now, when you have a railroad being built, what do you need? Railroad Heavy tracks. Labor. <laughs> okay, what kind of labor? Not particularly, yeah, labor. but what was being Sorry. done? Let's Immigrant talk about. Labor. Immigrant. Well, cooks. not always. Cook, cooks. No. What else do you need? But some of. But what you else? Need a lot of cooks. Hard hard labor, and, manual, and what to watch the men, area. keep yeah. after the men, you need cooks and housekeepers and clothes washers. Oh, you mean us women? Yeah. I know, we're always <laughs> forgotten. I know, we're always forgotten. Oh, so guess who this fella met? He met a woman named Archuleta, cooking for the logging crews. And this Archuleta was the granddaughter of Jose Francisco. They had seven children. Emmett Sr. is the only one who lived. And so once again, I know, isn't that amazing? It's just, am and it's amazing she lived. So Emmett, no, Emmett Jr. is the only one of their 
six who lived. Emmett asked for the pipe cross. Does anybody know why he wanted a pipe cross? What was his main career here? Welder. Pipe welder, exactly. Yay. Over in Los Alamos. Rosemary still lives in the family home. Right. And their generations, guess which generation they are on? They're on. Keep going. Keep going. They're on the eighth. They're on the eighth generation is alive now. The recent Emmett in the cemetery? Right there. The recent one? Yep, 2017. 2017, yep. Yeah. Yep. So. Can I say, Emmett told me that he welded the sides of the Southern Bridge, oh, Mooney yes. Bridge. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. And he, he, he did that uh, in the Korean War, too. So. He brings that in. Then also, um, one of their relatives was one of the uh, shepherds. Uh, we had three million sheep in this area, 30,000 at a Over time would come up from Bernalillo. And the, one of uh, Emmett's uncles, I believe, was up on top, and I was told a Navajo man killed him, tried to take the sheep, Marani. and men gathered here, went up and found that man did him in to get back the sheep, so. And remember how I started this. Whose land are we on anyway? But yeah. uh, it all comes yeah. back around. We're all gonna become this dirt anyway. I want to mention- I'm sure somebody owned the sheep. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. I want to mention an anecdote about Emmett. Emmett had a real rough side. Everybody was aware of that. And he had a real soft heart like many gruff folk do and he was really f fond of outside of he my hearing which was right inside just inside my hearing he would talk about folks who were tourists <laughs> and of course I'd put on my Texas accent when he did that mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and I went to a council meeting once and I don't remember what the topic was but something came up Emmett said something and I piped up with a smile and a wink and I said oh yeah tourists and he loved me ever since. <laughs> so Emmett and I made peace over that. And someone said that if you were here 20 years, you're a, I, he, I could be a local. Yeah, he said something about yeah. generations. I let him know when that happened. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I'm, eight, I'm a year and a half away. I'll never get to let, let him know. But Glenn did a bunch of census work 10 years ago, 11 years ago. And you found a, a land grant to the original Maestas land grant. There's a land grant up there. And the Maestas family, so they go back a real long way too. It would be neat to know more about that. Maybe someday we can combine the history of the cemeteries. But we wanted to start with Archuleta. Remember, he's over here in this unmarked grave that I piled up some stones. It's right in front of Clara and Guy, the babies. <coughs> and we ended up back here with the cards. So we made a complete circle. And we know these people, many, go wander, you'll recognize names. Mm -hmm. there, we know these people, they have history here, they have something that the Native Americans have and something that many of us don't. It's fixing they have rain, place, so. they mm -hmm. have place. Could I mention something else? Yeah. Uh, Emmett was the first fire chief here and on oh, his yeah. property is number one. He let me take a picture right. of it once. Oh, if yeah. anybody wants it, I'll email it to you. Oh, email it. Yeah. Any um, any other anecdotes? Yes. Yes, huh? What? What? Hope. Go ahead. Yes. <laughs> well, I feel like I'm almost a local now because I got to read all this. Thank you so much for joining me. In this. this has really been fun, and I think it's good to learn in this way. Now we've got a little bit more perspective. And come to the Hamas Springs Church tomorrow. We're going to be celebrating our 140th anniversary. We're going to be ringing that bell every hour on the hour for 10 hours. We're going to ring it 14 times. And we're meeting downstairs in the original sanctuary, not the new church. Which has the old vigas. Tom Swetnam has dated them for us. We know that this, these are the original vigas. Right? Right. Anything else? All right. Did someone say that?
Yes, Amanda Lewis had written something and apparently posted it, but this complete thing that I just did, no, it's only right here, right now. <laughs> oh, okay. We'll get there. We're going to clean up the descriptions of the cemetery. As, but it, you know, that's going to take years. We're all volunteers. But you're welcome to volunteer. <laughs> it will be fun. Well, I was going to go when you were, they were doing something yeah. like a week ago Thursday, but I yeah. couldn't after all. Uh, well, thank you. Do you have family here? Oh, we have a place up in Seven Springs. Do you have any family here? Oh, no. Okay. okay. No, nobody else would come. Uh, they just. Okay. So, Cemetery. You can go. But, but, but my, but my family's been cemetery. in Seven Springs since 1932. See, there we go. All right, wonderful. <laughs> What's your name? Uh, Jenny Forrest. Myra. Nice to meet you, Jenny. Nice to meet you. Thank Bye. you, Myra. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Linda. Where are you? Hi. Pretty little outfit. <laughs> wonderful.